There you are. Hello, hello, hello. Find your seat. And we can begin this pop stand here. Uh, my name is Joe, recovering alcoholic. Glad to have you here tonight to visit with our old friend. Um, I think the first time that I met John, I don't know, how many years ago was it, John, when you first came to the Recovery Church? It was before there was a Recovery Church, really, but I don't know. Something like that. In 95? I don't know exactly how we first, do you remember how we first got you to do something for us? Oh, no. Well, check with me after to see if it's somewhat true. Uh, John not only became a part of our early church, but became a friend of many of us as his, uh, his recovery spread out uh, throughout both no, not only the Minnesota, but uh, throughout the country. Um, John's been not only a friend of the recovery church, but he's been a personal friend of mine. Uh, throughout many of our escapades together. Um, many of the things that has happened in both of our lives, we told the other person not to do. And, uh, of course, that went really well. That meant that we probably should do it. Uh, he, unfortunately, has carried on his marriage, and some of us haven't. So uh, I should have listened to you, John, right? Anyhow, John's a friend of ours. Why don't you welcome John McAndrew. Thank you, Joe. There's a long story, and I'm going to save it for a particular song. And uh, behind me, that little, whoever made that, you know, makes me want to tear up. And to see the so many people in the seats, um, this is where you know my recovery journey started. It was in St. Paul, and. Uh, Joe Camp called me one day, and I'm going to play a little song about this later, but I had had a song, which I'm going to start with, that got into a movie, and, and uh, that was kind of exciting for me, and, but no, you know, a lot of people don't bother to look at the end of the movie to see where the, who wrote the song or what the song was about, and the song was placed in the movie where it didn't have anything to do with what the lyrics were about, but... Uh, Joe heard about that, and he said, you know, he calls me on the phone, and I answer the phone, and um, he goes, hey, this is Pastor Joe from the Recovery Church. Would you come down and play at our church? And I said, just without a second, I said, I'm afraid if I walk into a church, I'm going to catch on fire. <laughs> and then Joe starts laughing. And he sa I said, what, what's your deal? He says, well, I'm a Methodist minister, and I'm thinking, he can't be. He's talking crazy, and he told me a little bit of his story. And he said, why don't you want to come? And I said, well, I don't know what I believe, you know. And he says, then he surprised me again. He said, well, I don't care, you know. And I came down here, and he said, they have a band. And uh, I said, okay. And I'm a little suspicious. And that's when I came into the room, and I met Shaky Tommy, the bass player, who all of you know. And there's a whole thing that I, we all talk about perception, you know, and we all have a story of how we've perceived one thing that wasn't anything close to what I thought it was. I'm thinking, oh boy. And he's got this, you know Tommy, he's unbelievable. I'm Shaky Tommy, I'm your bass player. <laughs> I said, great. And when we started the song to practice it, my perception changed immediately. So we're going to talk about spiritual awakenings tonight, little things how you perceive. These little awakenings have come day after day after day, and coming to this church was an amazing thing for me. I came and did that Sunday service, and that morning I saw eight or nine people get up on the stage and talk about their experience with a power greater than themselves. And I didn't know anything about that. I was raised Catholic. <laughs> and I know this is on the YouTube channel. 
And I'm just going to confess my sin right now. But I thought the only way to, to God was through that one dude up there. Father, what's his name? And uh, I found out that that wasn't true here at this church. About eight people got up that day, and somebody read some Buddhist stuff, and then somebody read some out of the big book, and Joe did some scripture in a way that I had never heard stories told to me before. And that totally woke me up as to, wow, maybe this is different. So I played the concert that day, and I never left. And in a few songs, I'll do the song that we wrote. But here's the song. This is the first song, you know, uh, I, uh, I, this is being aired publicly, and I'm going to be real careful. That's just the way I have to be. But uh, I think there's an understanding in this room. I was pissed at God. And you told me I had to have a higher power. Uh, is pissed a bad word? That's a bad word. <laughs> I know it's not. I mean, nowadays, golly, it's third grade stuff. So I was angry as all get out, and I'm, you know, telling me I got to have a higher power. And what happened with this song when it got recorded and it got into a movie, I heard it come on the radio one day, and I'm driving the car, and I'm listening, and I'm going, ooh, boy, aren't I something. And then the third verse came, and I don't remember writing the third verse. And that's where I had a little bit of an awakening where, oh, I oh, wonder if it's me, if it's the way I look at things. Please give me new eyes. This is that song. Clap your hands if you want, like it, oh, oh, oh. A little slower now. I'm having a hard time trying to understand All the suffering, the misery that man goes through Where were you when I needed you? And how come I didn't get what I needed? How could you let them treat me that way? Where were you when I needed you? come over they darken my skies if it's how i look at things give me new eyes people are killing do anything fill their bodies with poison things just to feel good just to feel good why must everything so hard, can't you see I'm giving up? I don't know where you are. Oh, where are you? Oh, when black clouds come over, they darken my skies. If it's how I look at things, give me new eyes. If it's you, we need to each other we will see you let us see you see you now now feeling this way please forgive me for blaming you the way I do you see I need you mm -hmm. oh, when black clouds come over they darken my skies if it's how I look at things give me new eyes oh if it's how I look at things Give me new eyes. Ooh, yeah. Give me new eyes. 
Thank you. Every one of you in here has a story about how you saw something different. Before I got here in this path, this new life, I'll tell you just a little bit. I got to be careful how much I disclose. <laughs> Try telling these stories to a regular audience. They just go, what the? 1983, December 10th, they pulled me off the freeway in Brainerd, Minnesota. That's kind of near where the movie Fargo was made. That was kind of what my life was, like that bar in Fargo. It was Brainerd. It was 4 in the morning, and they pulled me off a freeway wearing a guitar and a pair of socks. <laughs> and like the elderly woman at the <laughs> Performing Arts Center, I told that story to about 10 years ago, right way in the back of the theater. She goes, why did you do that? <laughs> and, uh, it's funny when you talk to people, other people that are on this path, and you basically say to them, out of the, just the most honest part of your heart, I'm kind of crazy. <laughs> and they go, get in the car. <laughs> We're going to go somewhere together. And uh, I think uh, most of you know I moved to, to Tennessee, and uh, actually I was 42 years old, and I got a record deal at a place called Muscle Shoals Studios, not knowing a single thing about what I was doing. I had a green beret on, so I wanted to look cool, had little round horn rim glasses. I got down there, I didn't know anything was that was going on, and uh, what happened is I met my wife, Nancy, and I honestly think that that wasn't the reason I was supposed to go down there, the music, I was supposed to go down there and meet her. And I met her, and we were still together, and, and I, I have five grandchildren, it's unbelievable, and. Being here for two or three days, I was taken back to where I was when I lived in St. Paul. And I, I lived over here in a little garage, kind of round three after a divorce and something else. Actually, two divorces. And I remember a lot of stuff that happened in this town. I called an old friend in California and I said, I'm going back to Minnesota for a few days to do some work. And he said, won't it be great to go back and see those people that held your hand early in your recovery? And it is great. And I believe this is how God works. And in this story, this is the story of Garrison Keeler meets Gomer Pyle. Now, I'm Garrison Keeler. <laughs> Nancy's Gomer Pyle. I can't, or Dolly, Gomer Pyle. I got home from doing a concert a long time ago and I, it was a fancy one and my name was up on the marquee and they had to put I was from Nashville because nobody really knows me. <laughs> they had to say where you were from and I felt like kind of a big shot and I came home and I'm dreaming about my sugar-free ice cream, you know, when I get inside. And Nancy was in the house, I remember it like yesterday, she's on the phone and she goes, hold on, I'll ask him. And out of her mouth came a, a longer sentence than Forrest Gump ever could have come up with. I have a friend, he has a dear friend, his name is Isaac, he's been to treatment 24 times in 11 institutions, had seven DUIs. They think he's in a hotel in Nashville, they think he's dead, would you go get him? And my first thought is ice cream. <laughs> I don't want to do that. But then I called a friend and we went and got this Isaac guy and what happened was he was saved physically, which is the old way we used to treat people like us. And then the spiritual part comes next. And the place where I work, Cumberland Heights, took him in and got him back to where he could walk. And then his spiritual journey began. And this song happened two years later. Isaac is sober. I'm working with him as a consultant. And, uh, he said, I want to go to Knoxville, Tennessee with my new best friend, Jimmy. And I go, well, who is Jimmy? And I find out that Jimmy is from northern Michigan, used to run a prison in northern Michigan. His whole family's in the mafia. His uncle's name is Jimmy. And guess what his dad's name is? <laughs> They're all Jimmy. And uh, these two guys meet in a 
in a halfway house for men, sort of sober house, and Jimmy can't read. I, I don't think he could read good. He asked Isaac to help him fill out some complicated papers, and Isaac said, I'll do it if you drive me to my meetings and to my doctor's appointments. They became the greatest friends. Both of them had an ex-wife and two children who wanted nothing to do with them. And here's this odd couple. And what happened? Isaac said, I'm going to go to Knoxville to get Jimmy's old car. And they, I saw him three days later. I said, call me, get to some fellowship, you know, do what you got to do. And they came back three days later, and they were coming out of a place where about 25 of us had spent an hour contemplating the world. We came out, sun's out. In flies a Mercedes-Benz convertible with gold hubcaps and leather engraved front all through the front. And you'll never guess what name was written on the dashboard. Jimmy. It's like a really expensive car. They run to the end of this long parking lot. They do a 180. The tires screech. Smoke comes up. They come straight for us. And I'm going, oh my God, I haven't been a very good consultant to the. <laughs> and they stopped on a dime and they went like this. And Isaac goes, we drove 95 miles an hour the whole way back. And you know how this is. There's always a story in the back that you never know. And what I found out is when Isaac was 14, he got hit by a train when he and his dad went to get milk in Demopolis, Alabama. His father atomized in front of his face. Isaac lived with that. Isaac was 64 years old, and he hadn't smiled his whole life until that day with Jimmy, this crazy guy driving the Mercedes Benz. This is their story called God Works That Way. Well, Jimmy got his old car back, a Mercedes Benz, riding with the top down and his brand new friend. His name is Isaac, he's a good old Alabama boy. He's been fighting the old devil who just loves to take his joy. And now they fly through the Tennessee hills, waving their arms in the air. Jimmy was born in Youngstown where you had to be bad. Isaac and Demopolis in the backseat of a cab. Jimmy says, I always wanted a friend and a car to call my own. Now the oddest couple in the whole damn world, they're flying down the road and they fly through the Tennessee. mysterious ways sometimes putting us in just the right place who you're with it's never a mistake if you believe that God works that way See, they just got back from war with a bottle and a pill. No, they're not weak men. It's no matter of will. Why crawling back from emptiness, there came a light and a spark when the angels made them angels to keep each other from the dark. Now they fly through the Tennessee hills, waving their arms in the air. Cause God works in mysterious ways, sometimes putting us in 
just the right place. Who you're with, who you're with, it's never a mistake. If you believe that God works that way. Well, I believe, I believe that God works that way. As you all know, I like to get the crowd kind of engaged, and I won't do that tonight. Because <laughs> I forgot my tambourines out in my car, as a matter of fact. Um. Somebody asked me, about, so they said, what, do you what did you lose from uh, your drinking? See, I drank a lot. And I started drinking a lot really early in my life. And I, I did things while I drank, and I guess I had some fun. And then I kept doing things I, I wanted to do, but then uh, the drinking took over, and then I, then I just started to do what the drinking told me to do. And, it, you know, like a lot of people's story, it started with really awful tasting something. Like it was red and it was rotten, great mixture of rotten grapes and something else. And uh, I broke a tooth. I, I drove. I had some friends who were making out in the back of a car and they asked me to drive. I'd never driven before and I said, it'll be fine. I had a lot of courage going on and I drove them into about a four foot deep pond in the car. And running away, I uh, chipped my front tooth on a wine bottle. And. Uh, <laughs> I said, I think this is going to be a great way to live my life. It's just going to, it's going to go on and on, get better and better and better. Well, I, you know, it didn't. And uh, I think by the time I was 29, I, you know, I'd lost my mind. And I wasn't, it didn't matter if I lost my house or my marriage, but I was losing my mind. And that scared me. And I didn't want to lose my mind. Somebody asked me, what did you lose from all that? And I said, me, my soul, and my heart.
Yeah, he took them all. Me, my soul, and my heart. But I got them back. Yeah, I got them back. I'm never letting go I'm never letting go of me, my soul, and my heart <laughs> So I, uh that recording's got a choir and a whole bunch of instruments. And every time I write a song, I go to record it and I wreck it. <laughs> I kind of like this version. I, I lived a really long time in Winona, Minnesota, and it's a beautiful little town south of here. And I finally made it up to the big city at some point, and I was still, you know, drinking really, really heavy. But I figured that, you know, what they call that geographical. I'll go up there and get a job. You know, a real job. I, I was a uh, in Winona. I was the maintenance man at a at the Winona hotel. Had the keys. I maintained all the coolers for the. <laughs> they trusted me to do that. You know why would people? And I had a room upstairs. Oh God, I got room and board. I'm making buck. I got some keys. And the liquors down there. And the first thing I did decided to do was to get a bucket of brown paint and paint my whole room brown. It was a little hotel room, but I painted the sink, everything this brown color. I thought that was really cool. And uh, off I go, and part of what I did is I opened that bar at 7 in the morning, and I let these certain group of individuals who were not the school board, they were the, the town drunks. And they taught me how you don't drink at 7 in the morning by trying to hold a shot glass. Cause they, so they taught me this stuff. And one of the, one of the guys there was a, a man named Donnie Dearman, and he had big, curly, just a huge head of hair. And he walked like Bigfoot, and everybody knew him and went on it. He never said a word. He never said a word on those mornings. He just looked at me and grunted. Uh. And I had no idea who Donnie Dearman was, but he was one of those guys. And then my brother, who's a, kind of the rock star in Winona, we would get these guys at 2 in the morning when the bars would close, and we would give them stuff that you couldn't buy at the liquor store. <laughs> Some of them had little roots on the bottom of them, and you ate a few of those, and you went right to the moon and stuff. So we, one night we gave one to Donnie and his half-brother, Stanley, and we watched him roll around in a snow, plow, snow pile. And, and I remember very distinctly that one night Donnie holding his arms out and twirling around in circles. That was the last thing I'd seen of him. Till I came up here to St. Paul, and I saw him walking the streets. And you don't have to have words for most stories. He had two huge bags of aluminum cans. He was obviously homeless, trying to do whatever. And there he was. And I, I read in the paper, he even got the name Bigfoot up here in St. Paul, because uh, someone was, they thought, murdered by Bigfoot. He was a big, mean dude. And I saw him, I went, oh my god. The next thing I knew, I'm at the Union Gospel Mission, next to the Christ Recovery Center. And they go, come on down there, sing a few songs. And I went down there. And I, you know, frankly, I don't know if anything connected or not, because they're hungry and they're tired and, you know, that. And in walks Donnie Dearman. I go, holy cow. And I finish playing some songs and I walk over to Donnie and he's got two guys next to him. I go, Donnie, it's me, John, from Winona. And he goes, oh, Winona. That's what he did. I, and he's holding my hand, and now he's squeezing it really tight. And I'm, lots of things go through your mind that he, you know, I'm envisioning him just holding me up and shaking me like. And then his veins started getting blue and bulging, and then his eyes bulging out, and he started to have a, a psychotic moment. 
And the two men tried to say, come on, Donnie, come on, Donnie. And he wouldn't let go of my hand. And this is the hand I got in the snowblower. And, you know, this hand is really fragile. And uh, my drunkenness almost took it from me. And I couldn't get my hand out. They finally <laughs> got his hand out. And I remember looking at my hand, and it all went in front of my face. I drank drink for drink with that guy. And why is he there, and why am I here? And I really believe God's grace that I'm here tonight. And what happened was, two years later, Bigfoot, homeless man, found frozen to death under the Robert Street Bridge. I went darn it. I read the obituary, talked about his half-brother Stanley died also. He rode his bicycle into an oak tree in Winona. That's how he died. It gave previous, you know, um, his parents that had passed before him, and then it said, Donnie Dearman, retired colonel, United States Air Force. And uh, that makes you stop and pause. He went a little too far. And so people ask me, why are you going up there to do a concert, or why are you going over there? Why are you doing those go to those places where these people go. And uh, you know why. This is called A Little Too Far and Last time I saw Donnie was not far from here. Well there goes that old man again dancing in the dark a novel in each eye just twinkling like the stars they say he went crazy and he's been gone a while and chances are he's gone just a little too far In his heart it was broken A long time ago She really must have been something Yet yeah, to have such a hope the way fools are and chances are he's gone just a little too far maybe he's happy I don't know just dancing in the dark and maybe that's just the way some are. Nobody knows, no, just where his heart and soul are. And chances are they've gone just a little too far. And he drinks just to keep on going this way and he drinks any drugs whatever else to push his thoughts away and he drinks yeah, to go out in the dark and chances are he just a little too far And chances are He's gone a little too far
to get back over here. I was uh, playing in New York City, and I had a, it was filling in for a, a jazz band uh, in the theater district, a private restaurant in New York, so there was no name on it, just had a number, and you went in there. And it was a fun place for old musicians and actors to hide and stuff. But I replaced this old jazz band, and the rumor got out, I don't know why this keeps following me, somebody called and said, we heard Elton John's playing there. And <laughs> it's not the first time that happened. And of course, the owner got kind of angry. She didn't want Elton John playing her, just let me tell you that. But I, I'm from Minnesota. And I, here I am living in Long Island on a couch, and I take the train into Grand Central, and I take the subways to this gig, and I don't like that. It's not natural. You should stay above ground like these little gopher things that we have. And uh, one, one day, you know, I went and got down the bottom of the subway, and I told the story a lot of times, but it was powerful. I went down in there, and there was no noise. And the people were lined up the people that were going and coming, different direct, they were all standing there. It must have been 60, 70 people. And there was a man in the middle of the floor with no legs. And he had fashioned a little board with some wheels on it. And he had these gloves, powerful arms. And he's singing. And he's praising his God for the wonderful life he has. No wonder those people stopped. They're going like, he's got to be nuts. And you know, when you, when you take this path for a while, you can tell people that are on it. You can tell what's going on in their heart. This guy was stone, stone cold, cold sober, and so full of gratitude, it was unbelievable. It took everybody's breath away. And for about a minute and a half, he just stopped New York City. And this is called Broken Soul. And this is what happens to the Donnie Deermans if they get help. I saw him singing on a subway floor No legs beneath him, just the wheels on a board. This angel's voice came roaring out. Gently first, then a trembling shout. He sings his songs in these worn out clothes. On his head is shaking. secret place I swear that God only knows where it's honest and it's simple and it's only from his heart and the music flows yeah, from his broken soul strangers gather He just carries on Bluer and bluer and true with each word Oh, and my breath was taken Oh, yeah, and so would be yours And the music flows From his broken soul From a secret place I swear that God only knows where it's honest and it's simple and it's only from his heart and the music flows from his broken soul.
I've been running and I've been flying I've been chasing round this world Glory be this broken man Cause he slowed me down He'll never make it on the radio Where well, they're making up stories for the cowboys to tell They make all the money, yeah, they make the little girl scream Oh, but he makes me better and he makes me see And it's only from his heart And the music flows Yeah, the music flows The music flows from his broken Thank you. <laughs> Ernie Larson. It's like Vince Lombardi. A lot of people remember him, a lot of people don't, but I had written a little song once and it was kind of a folky song and I wrote it real early in the morning when I was living in my little garage and I thought, well this, you know, this won't make come to much of anything. <laughs> Ernie used to take me places and we went to some prisons we're going to video some stuff in prisons and I don't know what I was thinking I was a little excited a little nervous I remember early in my journey they you know my uh, consultant <laughs> took me to Stillwater prison and man oh man you know but now here Ernie and I are in there and and I'm going to play three or four little songs, you know, Ernie's bit, he tells story, I play a song. And so I get ready to play this song we're going to do next, and it's called Like a Child. And I start playing it, and these guys start getting up, and they start singing the chorus. And then they're dancing, and they're taking every inch out of this thing they can possibly get, because the guards are there, and they're not happy, you know. They're not supposed to have any fun. They're going to have as much fun as, and now they're up on the chairs, and I'm figuring, oh, this is a good thing, you know, and they're all singing like a child. So what we always do when we do this song, and I always do, and I'll let you know I work with patients at a place called Cumberland Heights, and I'm, now I'm the music therapist. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> Why'd you laugh so hard, Kuntz? I got a badge and everything. And I got some initials after my name. I, they wanted me to go to school. I said, I'll do it, I, I, but I swear I'm not going to learn anything because I don't want to learn what you get. <laughs> but I did. But we get this going, and we find out that music in the brain is a really good thing for people, people, period. But we talk a lot about mindfulness and consciousness and constant contact with God. And I don't, it doesn't matter if you're singing, if you're playing an instrument, if you're working on your car, if you're planting sunflowers, if you're listening to your child, you're in the present moment. It's the, it's the only place I've ever met God. I never met God thinking about something way out here or way back there. That's what happened to those big dudes. They finally just forgot about where they were. And it lasted for, I read the song went on and on. I'm thinking, I'm a ham, and I go, I'm going to stretch this out forever. <laughs> it got louder and louder, and then more dopamine came to their heads. And we now know that prayer and meditation, and not that we needed science to prove it, but we can see now what prayer does to the frontal cortex and who does let's let's do this easy. Who doesn't have an anxiety disorder in here? See if anybody's had 
So we got these little limbic systems in the amygdala that, you, you know, my, they're only supposed to last 30 seconds. Mine went off when I was nine, and it just never stopped. And uh, for one little moment, it takes them out of that place, and, and, and smiles happen. And that stuff that happens when you, your dog does this to you. <laughs> Like, what is that? A I ask patients where I work, what's going on with that? What's that dog telling you when he does that? <laughs> and they go, oh, I love you. I forget that you threw a can of dog food at me yesterday. You're the greatest. You sure look nice today. And then you ask him, what does God tell you? What does your God tell you? I love you. I forgot that you slammed the door on me yesterday. <laughs> you look wonderful today. <laughs> and so what I'm going to do, and I, I know I don't want to get anybody up here that's going to, I know there's COVID going around. We got broken kneecaps. This is kind of a, if I could get four women and four men to come up on each side of me up here in the front and become the kind of the lead singers for this, song like a child and uh you know most of you know if you don't volunteer you're just getting called up here anyway so mr bonnewell <laughs> so here's the thing with perception he's putting on this act like oh my god i don't want to get up in front of people but but we know line right up yeah there we go look at that we got th three two Woo! oh nice So this is a big photo op, so don't get too much in front of my mug over here, pal. I'm, gonna <laughs> I'm just kidding. So the lyrics are, like a child, like a child, I'm always learning. And uh, we're only missing one person. Joe Camp, as long as he comes up and stays over on that side so he's not blocking this. Oh. There he goes. Yeah, he's done us a bunch. And before we go any farther, I want to just a little shout out to some people that are watching this down in Iowa. Terry, Tammy, and Brad. Uh, we're really glad you tuned in. I'm glad they asked me, you know, to do this on the YouTube channel. I, I got a couple of Iowa jokes, but I'm not going to tell them. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the song, Like a Child, featuring the Recovery Church. Men and Women's Choir. <laughs> and remember, you guys sing, re <laughs> sing really loud. You should be up here. Come on. I know you. And do a little, yeah, you got it. You got it. Do a little bit of, just imagine you're in Rod Stewart's background singers. Now, the women will be better at doing that. I don't know why. It's not, no offense to anything. Well, I changed my mind. Larry's wiggling in his ass pretty nice. All right. Excuse me, but. Look at Larry go over there. There is no road for us to follow There is no right or wrong way to go And each one of us has our own tomorrow We get lost yet to find our way home Like a child Sing it! Like a child I'm always learning a little bit of baby, yeah. Like a child, like a child, I'm always learning, yeah, yeah. That's pretty good for a start. Maybe bad things are really blessings. Maybe sad things go up to be joy. Maybe hunting teaches me to be more loving. Maybe less 
lessons are the only way I know like a child A little bitty baby sing a there like a child like a child I'm always learning yes you know he walked with the fools and the beggars you know he walked with the poor and the self-righteous in his humbleness I can hear him say like a I'm always lying like a little bitty baby yeah like a child like a child down here. <laughs> this could be really a bad move. Uh oh. <laughs> we won't hurt you. I gotta get Yeah, this is better. <laughs> now I can see Larry. Two <clears throat> Just when I think I know all the answers. Just when I think that I know, I know, I know for sure, yeah. Just when I think you can't teach me nothing no more It's time to teach me just a little bit more Like a child, yeah, like a child I'm always learning Like a child, ooh, like a child I'm always learning like, like a little, little baby. baby. Larry, come up here. One, two, three. Like a child, like a child. Only we are here. Little baby. Like a child. You gonna tear it up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three. Like a child. Like a child. Always learning. Like a little baby. Here's a really shy guy. Shy guy? Shy guy. One, two, three. Like a child. Like a child. I'm always learning. Like a little babe. Like a child. Like a child. I'm always Like a little Dopamine everywhere. <laughs> that shy guy, he was going nuts, wasn't he? You can imagine how that would cheer up. Um, you know, I work in a treatment center and we get 100 patients and they've been looking at some PowerPoints and they've been looking at some other stuff and listening to some lectures, 
stuff like that. And uh, to get them jacked up like that is just really, really fun. Then the trouble is you have to calm them down. Because <laughs> <laughs> then it's hell to pay. And I'm, I'll show you how to do that. Thank you, Larry, and the singers. This is, uh, I work with, uh, I work with, at my job, we have an adolescent program, it's called Arch Academy, and it's really fantastic, and it's, it's a lot of young, it's young men, and uh, I do a bunch of stuff where they just get all fired up, I hand out the tambourines, and you all have seen that, and they, you know, one of the first times I did it with the adolescents, a, a 13 year old boy, took that tambourine and now you got to understand wherever testosterone is produced I don't want to go there but he had a really lot of it <laughs> <laughs> and he took that tambourine and he smashed it on his forehead broke all the cymbals <laughs> off it and I'm going maybe it's not a good idea to get him too revved up here <laughs> and then I'm thinking to play anything mellow or soft for them is probably a bad idea. They're not going to care. And I was wrong. And this song is about um, getting older. And <laughs> and not wanting to waste any more days. And I uh, I have I've made a little bit of progress, but I am really liable to waste a day on some thought, some feeling, some anger, all that kind of stuff. And I got this little grandson now that I gotta, I just gotta be around for him, you know, and stuff like that. So this is called Before They All Slip Away. And I played this for the wild adolescents. And they all came into the present moment and started walking, you know, doing this with their head. And then they pulled out their lighters. We had to go, no, 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 you can't. I don't want to leave this up Knowing I didn't try I don't want to go, no I don't With my hopes and dreams far behind And any chance that slips right through these hands let me try again I don't want to take one more breath Without loving you the way I should I don't want to go one more day, baby Without showing you all the way I could In any chance I let slip right through these hands. Let me try again. Cause every day is a precious gift. Only once will they ever come our way. So I'm hanging on tight as I can. Before they all slip away before they all slip away Ooh. I want to know true grace by mending our hearts just a little bit Without our souls torn apart 
And any chance I'd let slip right through these hands Let me try again Cause every day is a precious gift Only once will they ever come our way so I'm hanging on tight as I can before they all slip away before they all slip away I want to love you with all my heart before they all slip away. Thank you. Bobby, can we get that little video pre prepared? And I'm a Tell a little story about a very special person named Paul. And Paul was Paul was my little brother right underneath me. And many many years ago, Paul it was threatened to put him into an institution. He was a little hard to take care of. He had a lot of stuff, very special needs. He's one of the most brilliant human beings I'd ever known, but he was diagnosed with borderline intelligence. So that tells you a lot about whoever makes up those rules about borderline intelligence. He was an amazing kid, and I, uh, when I started, I got a record deal, and I went to Nashville, and I met my wife, Nancy, and I, now I'm trying to figure out how the heck are we going to wing this deal. I didn't want um, Paul to leave this place. Paul was the janitor at the recovery church. Joe gave him a job. And it took Paul maybe a week to empty a couple of ashtrays. <laughs> He was amazing because he'd think of stuff, you know, and Joe was so patient. Paul would come home with that cash. It was unbelievable. And uh, then I'm struggling with how to get down to Nashville, and this was such a sacred, safe place for Paul to be. And uh, it took quite a while. It took over five years. And finally, someone from the recovery church started a foster care home. And Paul was able to stay there, and it gave me enough faith that he was safe enough, and I moved down. We eventually moved Paul down. And three years ago, Paul passed from cancer. And uh, that was, uh, you know, it sucked. And I, uh, we did everything we could for him, and Paul did it very gracefully. And he passed away at, on 12-12, on March 12th. And 12-12 is the date when I started my new life. And I said, thank you, that's fine. And he went on. We did a really nice ceremony for Paul. I got three different ministers to come, covered all the bases. <laughs> Had a real uh, Church of Christ guy who was unbelievable. He got kicked out of his church. So anybody kicks kicked out is, yeah, well. I hope Larry laughed at that. Huh? We had a wonderful service. And then all of that hushed down, and then uh, I'd be thinking about Paul, and my wife Nancy would say, do you remember when Paul, and I'd just say, ah, you know. And I put the pictures down in the house. I looked at them, because I thought I had to be father, brother, minister, doctor. Paul had trouble communicating sometimes with people, and I kind of knew his language, so I figured I'm the only one in his life. And then I felt all his guilt, all that stuff. So I remember when I went to my place to start my new journey many, many years ago, there was an old guy there that said, get a daily meditation book, and if you read it every day, you'll never have to drink again. Now I know he could have spoke for a week on what the other part of it is. And uh, thank God I've been doing that because I got so low, and one morning I'm doing a meditation, and I'm thinking about Paul, and I'm going right in the crapper. All of a sudden, this calm and this voice, and it just was really happy. He said, 
when Paul wasn't with you, he was with me. Then I really fell down, and I think my wife thought I'd lost it, called a padded cell. And I got up and everything, you know, a lot of times I write music about stories. I think that's really all they are, is stories, you know, real stories, not ones we make up. The broken soul guy in the subway, that's a real story. So I wrote, and I'm in my home, and I, I have a little studio, and I, I write a few lines, and I play it, sounds good. I better hit the record button and so I don't forget what I'm working on. I had no intentions of recording that song. I got to the middle, and I go, well, it's okay. I'll play a little while, maybe there'll be a solo in here. Then I go, oh, I got the third verse coming, oh no. Got through that, then I have no ending, and the ending just came, and then I thought I better hold out the piano at the end, because you don't want to just stop, because then the whole song, and I held it out. And then uh, I'm trying to think how to not say a bad word here. I was, but anyway, I got done and I listened to it, I went, holy cow. Holy cow, this is, this is pretty special. I didn't plan on it. We sent it to Los Angeles. We're doing an album. And uh, I tell the producer I'd like to have a cello player play on it. And he finds one, really well-known cello player. So, but he's busy. You know, the better they are, the more they cost, and the less you can get them over to the house. And three months pass by. I'm giving up. Finally, I get a call from the producer in L.A. They go, we got the guy. He's coming in to record the song. Great. The next day they call, they send me a rough of it, and I use I, 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 that word came, and I'll say, holy cow, this is beautiful. And the guy calls me and goes, you listen to it? I said, yeah, and he goes, I need to tell you that this man has a little brother like your, your little brother. And he said he doesn't want any compensation, and he was so honored to be a part of it. And you can hear his heart and soul in this song. And Bobby's gonna play, you ready to go back there? It's going to play this little video for you. He was right here with me. He left us here on earth And today I miss him so Tried to keep him from danger Like a son on my own I fall into holes Where regret fills my soul Wishing I could have kept him From any pain at all But God told me this morning there's so much you did not see All those days he laughed and smiled With joy beyond belief Those days we played with angels And life for him was a breeze On those days he was without me He was right here with me On those days he was right here with me He showed me how to live Cause I had so much to learn How to care for someone else And being there when it's your time Simple things were hard for him, but he never let you know. I feared when I would leave him like a son on my own. But God told me this morning, there's so much you did not see. All those days he laughed and smiled and had joy beyond belief. On those days we played with angels And life for him was a breeze On those days he was without you He was right here with me On those days without you He 
was right here with me. So when I fall into these holes where regret steals my soul and all that I remember are the troubles and the lows so let me not forget forget what you said he was riding high riding high All the days he laughed and smiled And had joy beyond belief On those days we played with angels And life for him was a breeze On those days he was without you He was right here with me On oh, when he was without you was right here with me and now he's without you but he's right here with me There's a great shot of him there when he had his teeth in. <laughs> and uh, I am, uh, had not, had God not told me that, since that moment, I have been able to talk about Paul without crying. Now I just about lost you in the back there. But what a beautiful thing. We got time for a couple more songs, and I, I want to do this one song and have you all kind of sing along with it. We, everybody got a little copy of Amazing Grace, and this is nothing new, but it'll be new for us tonight. Is there anybody in here that has the courage to maybe sing one of the verses on the microphone? That, um, huh? You? Oh, that's so good. Come on up here. Give her a nice hand and You know all of them, right? Yeah. And so, you know, we'll do a verse and, and then do the mm -hmm. first two and then repeat the first one. And okay. just make this stretch out till about tomorrow morning. Okay. And but I'll also I'll bear in mind, I'll sit down. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> I have a higher voice than what you're usually playing. Well, I'm going to do it in F. Oh, great. That's a good cue for me. I know it is. See, I knew this. So there's going to be a little jazz couple little jazz licks in this. I'm going to do the, why am I up here so close talking to you? You can hear me if I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they can't. <laughs> but they can't. Yes, exactly. So I'm going to run through it a little bit, and then I'll okay. kind of kick you in when we start. How and would be if I move over here so I can see you? That's great. Yeah. Now I can see my. Do you like some water? Yeah. Get some water? Got some red jelly beans? Once upon a time, I was a coloratura, and I haven't sung at that level in about 20 years. See, this is way better than Bob Barker, but you can still <laughs> sing it now. Uh, I can only screw it up. Right? Now, let me, <laughs> let me get into my little groove of this so you can mm -hmm. feel it. In the right. I'm going to do a little electric. <laughs> I needed to say, this is we're going to try to vacuum some money out of you. <laughs> this and all the money goes to the church and, you know, whatever. So, all right, thank you. Hold on. 
got to let me do the little church part. Cue me. <laughs> everybody real loud. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind. First verse, here we go. sung much in 20 years, so thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Two songs, and then I'm leaving, promise. In fact, I'm leaving right out the door, going to the airport, going back to Nashville. <laughs> it's going to be really tough to go home. And, uh, but trust me, I'm going. And uh, here's a song that I never get to tell why it got written, and I could get I get to tell it tonight. There's a club downtown called the Downtown Club. <laughs> Went in there one Sunday morning where a bunch of people with a common problem meet, 
they go to meet God, I guess. And anyway, they have a kitchen there, and it's <laughs> really nice. And that kitchen draws a lot of people to come to meetings. It also draws a lot of people that don't have money to eat or have coffee. And they come into that club on Sunday morning. And uh, I always notice this one fella come in, he'd get his coffee, someone would give him enough money to buy breakfast, and he'd sit out in the kitchen. And then he never came back into the little, those little secret rooms where there's God knows what goes on. He came back in there one day and was sitting, and we were all surprised, and some people celebrated some time in their journeys. And he just raised his hand. He didn't know the protocol. And he said, there's a thread that runs through you, and I wish I could hold on to it. And he had one tear left in his eye. It's probably dehydrated. And he just reminded me of this thread that we need to hold on to. And I can grab a hold of that thread every morning I wake up, any place I go in the world. Uh, it's a beautiful thing. And this, the thread running through this room is about this wide. It's like the, the rope on a huge super tanker ocean liner called the thread. a thread running through connecting you to me and me to you I'm gonna hang on I hope you do too don't know where it's going but I'm going there with you today I smile with a twinkle in my eye I see clearly not a cloud in my sky I Learn to love a reason set aright. I know what's happening, but cannot tell you why. Blind faith is something so new. I'm closing my eyes, gonna hang on to you. Don't know where it's going, no, no. Don't So much stronger, I know it's true. <laughs> Not when I'm alone, but when I am with you. I'm gonna hang on, I hope you do too. Don't know where it's going, but I'm going there with you. Blind faith is something so new. I'm closing my eyes, hanging on. I woke up this morning looking down at my shoes. Yeah, you know about it, baby. I got them all walking through. Yes, I do. Nothing woke up this morning. Yeah, I got them all walking through. People tell me walking blues ain't bad. The worst old feeling I done more I done ever had. Ooh. People tell me the walking blues ain't so bad. Oh, come on.
go marching in oh, when the saints go marching in how I'd love to be yes I would in that number oh yeah yeah when the saints go marching in Refuse to shine. Oh, when the sun refuses to shine, how I want to be, oh, yeah, in that number. Mm, when the sun refuses. Well, I'm a steamroller, baby, bound to roll all over you. I'm a steamroller, child, bound to roll all over you. I'm going to inject you so sweet old rock and roll and feel you for the rhythm and blue. And I'm a cement mixer. Shining on a burning phone. I'm a semen mix. Turning on a burning phone. I'm a demolition derby, honey. Yeah, hefty hump of steaming John. Oh. Thank you, gracias. Mucho gracias. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to do one more. Good idea. <laughs> this is it, I promise. I like to play for a small crowd where I can see your eyes watching these songs. I would rather touch a few very, very well in a small crowd. And I like to play in little dark smoky rooms Well, I can hear you well, you can even hear me well, too I would rather touch a few Very, very well, yeah In a small And maybe just you, you and I, it's all the crowd is ever going to be. Well, that's enough, yeah, don't you see, don't you see, of a crowd, of a crowd for me. Oh, piano 
they can always be found. People everywhere, they will always gather round. I would rather touch a few very, very in a small crowd, in an itty bitty crowd. small cry love you all thanks safe driving home